Chevre, how are you? I hope everyone is gesund, stark, on freilach, begash I hope everyone is healthy, strong, and happy physically and spiritually. I don't think I've spoken to you since the new year. So in the new year, Tav Shem Pei Gimel, tonight is Oyel Elev Yeim Akipurim. In New York, we haven't done Kapores yet. And in Melbourne, you've done already Kapores. So now we're speaking to you direct from the Shechune. And with, we're going to give a short message for Yeim Akipurim. There's a story that's one of my favorite stories in all of Chabad literature, which I've been repeating the last couple of days, but I don't think I ever made a video about it. And it's a very fundamental story. But first, let's start as usual with a Pasuk, a prayer, and especially in the Aseris Meitshuva, after Rosh Hashanah, where we just said, Utzfila, So we have to focus on those three things, Bechal, we should remember. Tshuva, Tfila, Tztaka, Mavin, Nesrei, Agzeira. So we'll start with the Tfila straight away. And that is, Kaveh, El Adinoi, Chazak, Liyamez, Libecha, Vekaveh, El Adinoi, which means hope in the Ebishter. Be strong and let your heart be valiant and hope in Hashem. So this is the exact prayer we should have right now going into Yom Kippur. We're confident that Hashem will forgive us and we can start with a totally new slate. In Mirz Hashem, Obez Hashem is Barich. Now, we're in the Aseris Yimei Tshuva. The mitzvah of Yom Kippur is Tshuva. That's why we have the Al Chait, which is, according to all opinions, what is the most actual component of tshuva, confession. So that means that the main focus of the Yom Tif, of Yom Kippurim, is the mitzvah of tshuva. So what does it mean to do tshuva? So this is one of the most fundamental concepts in Judaism, the Lava to talk about, but we'll just say one story and one idea, which Chassidus came to show a whole new perspective. When you learn Chassidus, in the Kutit Torah, there's some concepts, some subjects, without the Rebbe writes, it's not like the world thinks that this word means such and such. No, it's a mistake. We have to redefine the word. We have to come to the true definition. And actually, concerning Tshuva, after the Alter Rebbe, our Rebbe, the Rebbe, once spoke a famous talk, and he spoke about Tshuva Tfilot Staka, and how the common translation in English is wrong and leads to misunderstanding. And the real translation is something that tells us the true concept of the word. And concerning Tshuva, the Rebbe said that usually it's translated as repentance, which has to do with regret, which is connected to negativity. But the real translation of the word Tshuva is return. And what does return mean? Return means returning to your true self, to your essence, to your better self, to who you really are. And this is what the Alter Rebbe in the Kutei Torah says, Lo Yikitoy, Yisraelim, it's not like the word the world thinks. That Tshuva means on a sin, but Tshuva means, Ruach Toshuv El that the spirit returns to its original pristine state of purity as it was before it came down into this world. That means basically always reaching, digging deeper into yourself to come to your very essence. And this is associated also with a tremendous story. The Alter Rebbe, who was the first leader of the Chabad movement, he had a couple of public debates, disputations, where he took on the opponents of Hasidism. They were called the Misnagdim, those that were against, those that were the opponents. We can call them... <laughs> the antis. In any case, one of his most famous debates happened in the city of Minsk. And at this debate, the scholars from all surrounding cities of Vilna, Shklov, Brisk, Slutsk, they came to this debate. It's a very long story, which the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, discussed in a couple of places, 
But I'm just going to repeat one part of the narrative, which is very important. Besides for the fact that it got into questions and answers and Talmudical complex problems and questions, the main two arguments that they had against Hasidic movement was as follows. Number one, the question was, is it true that in Torah Sachsidis, in the Torah that the Baal Shem Tov spoke about and revealed, they emphasize the importance of the prayers of the unlearned, the davening of the Anoshim Pshutim, the davening of the simple folk. In general, it's known that when the Baal Shem Tov came along, at that time there was a great divide, there was a great division <laughs> between the elites, between the scholars, the academics, and the simpletons, the laymen. And the scholars looked at themselves as better, higher, and superior, and they looked at the laymen as inferior. And it caused a great divide. And one of the great innovations of the Baal Shem Tov, that he brought together this rift, and he showed the great beauty of the regular layman, simpleton, the earnestness and the purity, etc., as we'll see in the following Torah. And he brought up from the scholars that they have to demand even more from themselves, as we'll see in this story. So the two questions that they had, the opponents against Chassidus, was number one, is it true that the Baal Shem Tov emphasized and stressed and spoke to the simpleton, the regular layman, the, the, the workers, the farmers, that they should put their heart and how beautiful their prayers are and how precious their prayers are to Hashem. When we know that the world is held up by the scholars, this was their question. If we read the Talmud at face value, it speaks much against the Amaratzim, ignoramuses, so to speak. Now these scholars looked at regular laymen as the ignoramus of the Talmud, who the Talmud does not speak highly of the ignoramuses. On the contrary, the Talmud stresses the importance of the scholars. And here the Baal Shem Tov is coming along and saying that the prayers of the so-called ignoramuses is cherished by Hashem, and it's important. That seemingly undermines the scholars. The second question they asked, is it true that the Baal Shem Tov said that even Goinim, even Torah geniuses and masters, and even a tzaddik has to do tshuva? Again, the question was, the whole Talmud is full of saying how great tzaddikim are, how unbelievable they are, how special they are. And the Baal is coming along and saying, even tzaddikim have to do tshuva? And the same idea behind this question is that it undermines seemingly the scholars. So they saw the revelation and the Torah Sachsidus of the Baal Shem Tov and the Magad and Alter Rebbe as something which would undermine scholarship, academia, and the respect for scholars. So the Alter Rebbe said, I will answer these two questions with one Torah that I heard from my master, the Magid, who he heard it from the Baal Shem Tov. An amazing Torah. And that Torah is based on the story of the first encounter that Moshe Rabbeinu has with God, with Hashem in the Torah. What's the story of the first revelation that Moshe Rabbeinu has, his first encounter with Hashem? It says that after Moshe became an adult, one day he was walking along and an angel of God appeared to him through the burning bush. Then it says Hashem appeared. But in the Pasuk it says, Moshe saw this curiosity. And Moshe says, Asura no, ve'ere, esamara ha'godel hazeh. He was curious and he said, I have to move aside to see what this wonder is. And then he saw the burning bush. And according to Rashi, the message over here was that God gave the message to Moshe that he is in the bush amongst the thorns to say he's with the people. And now this is what the Baal Shem Tov explained. 
First of all, what did he see? The Pasuk calls the fire Lavas Esh, the fire of the flame, the heart of the flame. Lavas is the word lave in it. What is the heart of the flame? The heart of the flame is the fire in a simple Jew, in the unlearned Jew, in the so-called ignoramus. His yearning, his thirst, his fiery love of Hashem never abates. Why? Because the scholar, as the verse says, hey, He's thirsty, he goes to water in my Melatera. So his yearning, his thirst is quenched when he learns the Plat Gemara. When he learns a page of Talmud, his yearning and his thirst and his love becomes quieted. So it's great that he has that outlet through learning and through studying. But the layman, the Ish Pashit, because he doesn't have that outlet of study, so therefore his fire is never becoming quenched. He's crying out 24-7, Oy Hashem, I love you. While he's chopping wood, Oy Hashem, Tate He's always on fire. And this is the message that Moshe Rabbein has to receive. Where is this fire? Not in a fruit-bearing tree. Not in a tall tree. Not in a tree that looks glorious and grand. But in a simple bush. In humility. In the simpleton who doesn't think highly of himself. And is humble. And is constantly yearning for Hashem. That's where Hashem is. That's the fire. The fire of love of the simpleton. Which connects to the essence of Hashem. <laughs> I'm there. In the heart of the simple Jew. I'm with him. Because he's constantly calling out to me. That's one part of the Torah. That explains what was the message. The message that Moshe will be the future leader. Of the entire generation. To see the quality of humility of the simple layman. But how does he come to that? And what does that draw out in him? He sees a curiosity. And then what does Moshe do? Moshe says, Asura no. He has to turn aside. And what does Rashi say? Asura no mikan I have to move away from here to get closer to there. So he noticed the heart. Of the fire. He saw the superiority so to speak. Of simple people. And that caused him. In him. In Moshe Beinu. To get closer to that message. He realized that he also has to shift. That's what it means. Asurana Mikan. Move from here. Let's to get closer to there. And this is the answer. Two answers to the two questions. What were the two questions? One question was. What's the superiority of simple people? The answer is they're constantly on fire. What's the second question? How could Chassidah say that even Tzadikim have to do tshuva? Because tshuva doesn't mean connected to sin. Change the definition. Erase the previous definition. Like Tshuva is not connected to sin. What are tshuva connected to? Constant growth. Constant improvement. Turn aside. Leave open a window. Be receptive to growth. That's what it means to do tshuva. So here we're standing, Edwin Kipper. And this is the message. We should make two resolutions. One resolution is that we should constantly try to be on fire. Never let our spiritual excitement become dry. It should always be like a spark, fresh, new, excited. That's what the truth is. We have chassidus, we have primis at Torah, we have the Ebishta, we have Torah, we have mitzvahs. We're in a relationship with Hashem. Don't let it ever become dry, old, stale, lame. <laughs> this is what you should be aiming for. Aim for inspiration as much as possible. Even though discipline is more important, Kabbalah sale, 
but we should also aim for inspiration because the Abishta wants us to be in it, not only because of discipline, even though discipline is very important, and that's the basis, but it should become more part of you. This is the life. This is what we're about, etc. And that's the message that Moshe Abbeinu, even the academic who feels good because he wrote, he has a new idea, and he has his mind, but guess what? There's also the fire, the heart, the emotion, and the passion. And the second message is the sin of complacency. Doesn't mean a sin. Chas <coughs> v'shalom. But tshuva means we fight complacency. Don't ever be satisfied just by what you did yesterday. Think about what you have to add today and how you can even add more tomorrow. And that's the message of a Surah Mikan Liskar of Lashon. It's a movement. Now, with tshuva in general, on the one hand, we say tshuva means return. That's what we're talking about. Your essence is your nefesh kiss, your connection to God. And tshuva doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to discover the real you. That's on one hand. But according to Nigel, in a certain sense, we say tshuva means there's a new you. But what does it mean a new you? Not a real new you. It means that you're not the same person that did what you did yesterday. You're wiser, older, and therefore you're not going to do that foolish thing that you did yesterday. And that's also the power of tshuva, the idea of transformation. Because since you're older and wiser, there's no way you'd consider doing that foolish thing that you did yesterday. So tshuva, at the same time that it means returning to your true self, it also means you became a new person. You can't be held responsible <laughs> for what you did yesterday because now there's a new you. That's one aspect of tshuva. So both sides are true. On the one hand, sometimes you could take a small step and that small step represents a new you, even though it's a small step. Because the small thing that you changed but in that way, you became a new person in a certain sense. And there's also returning to your true self, realizing that within you are the deepest treasures, infinity itself. Because like it says in this week's Pasha, Ki chelek havaya amoy. In us is a part of Hashem. Kut yontif, gmach si metoiva. Ebrishtu should bring, that we should see, tov shim pei gimel. Teish nas, guula pshuta. The redemption. Every single one of us should be redeemed on a personal level, on a universal level, with the Gula Mitzvah Shleimah, take it from the Yad Mamish.